Hi, I'm Cindy Cloward with Riley Blake Designs, and today we're going to talk about how to create a simple and easy quilt with panels. Now, panels typically come in 24 and 36 inches, and what a panel is, is a printed piece of fabric that has beautiful designs that you can create a really lovely quilt around. So this is a Girl Scout panel. We're the official license of Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. And so that's a fun panel to start with. And after you've got a panel prepared, I've got a finished quilt top that's ready to go to the quilter. And this is what it looks like. So you can see that panel in the center of the quilt, and then you've added a border. Now what's fun about this design is they've used five inch stackers. And so various coordinating prints of Girl Scouts around to make a border, another border, and then a final border. And you've got a quick and easy finished quilt. I'll put that over here. But now we're entering the digital age of printed fabric. And so now we have more possibilities with digital printers. Now this is a 56 by 66 inch panel and it is digitally printed. Look how big and beautiful this is. And you typically would only need to add one border and you've got a good size finished quilt. So I'll put that over here. And then I'm going to show you the project we're gonna work on today. I'm gonna show you how to create a quilt out of this panel. I'll show you the finished quilt back here. So I'm gonna show you how to grow this panel with borders into a quilt. So let's get started. So now let's talk about how to get started in working with your panel. Typically when you go to the store, panels are found on the bolt and they'll be rolled on the bolt. And when they roll them out, usually they'll hand cut them but if they don't, if they go to use a rotary cutter, request that they hand cut your panel because all panels typically are not printed perfectly on the grain. And so if they cut with it folded in half, you might get, your panel might be miscut and it will be difficult to work with. So here's a typical um, seaming of panels. There's just a stitch line down the middle, which is really your cutting line. So if you ask them to hand cut it, they'll cut it accurately and you won't have to worry about having a miscut. So we don't need this panel. Now you've got your panel ready to go. Now what, what's different about panels is, again, I talked to you a little bit about the shifting of the print on it. It's not necessarily perfectly on grain, but that's okay. You can make adjustments. Let me show you what I mean. So when this is cut, I can already see here, when this was previously cut, it, it's off just slightly. So instead of cutting straight along here, I'm going to actually cut straight along these borders. So I'm going to frame it up here. And you can do that because it's just slightly off and um, you want it to look nice. And so you're going to use these uh, borders here as your reference point to square up your quilt. Now I'm going to show you how to prepare your borders. How you do that is you're going to fold your quilt 
or your panel in half because you're going to measure and you don't measure top and bottom you measure in the middle because you're going to use that measurements to make two borders for each side so let's start with our length so I typically do sides first and that measures 21 and a half this is a really good time to get out a pencil and some paper because you're going to write down a lot of measurements as you're growing your border. So 21 and a half is our side pieces. Now you're not going to measure your top right now because you're adding to your sides. So after you've sewn your sides, you're going to measure your top. So now what's great about panels is typically they, can't, they come with coordinating fabrics. And these are some fun coordinating fabrics for Boy Scouts. This is the Scout Oath and the Scout Law um, in word print. So that's, that's a lot of fun. So first, I fold this out. If, and I always cut my borders um, folded. And if you get that funny elbow in your borders, it's because you ha haven't folded this correctly. And so you want to make sure this is folded correctly and there's not a bend in, in your fabric when you cut those out. So I hold it up from the fold and let it fall down like that. I'm going to kind of square up my sides. Now I flip this over because I'm right-handed. And I'm adding, on this quilt, we've added two three and a half inch borders and then a five and a half inch border. So what I'm measuring right now is three and a half inches. So I've got my three and a half inches cut. I'm going to put our coordinating fabric away. And I usually cut off my selvages right now too. Put those there. Cut that off. Cut my selvages off there. Um, I'm going to press this real quickly. A little spray starch on here. And why I'm pressing this is because I want a clear fold in the center of this border. So now we, we want 21 and a half inches. And since um, fabric is typically 42 inches wide, this is a perfect 21 and a half inch. So I'm not trimming any more on this. Yeah, th those are spot on. So now I'm going to take out my panel and show you how to pin on your borders. Now this is the time where you want to fold your panel in half. Again, we're doing the sides of the panel and find your center. Do a little finger press on there. I open it up. Sometimes you can mark it with a pin as well. And of course you always sew right sides together. So we see the center of our border. Now be uh, mindful if you have a directional print, which we do, we have words, of which direction you want the words to be facing. I'm gonna have them facing towards me, so um, it's facing the right direction. You might need to flip that. So that's centered here. I 
I'm going to pin both ends. Now when you're squaring up your quilt, especially with panels when it wasn't perfectly centered, sometimes your sides, you need to do a little um, tugging to get it just right. So it's like this, fabric's very stretchable and so you want to make sure it's on there evenly. And I'm gonna pin the center side here. And a lot of times that's all I pin it. But if you're new to sewing, go ahead and pin a few more spots. You can, I always pin um, half in between and then you could pin here, 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 and here. So half in between here. So now I'm going to pin my other side and then I'm going to take it to the machine and sew. So now we're ready to sew our borders and I have a, a foot for my baby lock machine that has a fourth inch seam guide. It's really important to make sure you have the fourth inch seam guide there whether you have a foot or you have something to measure that. So I, I typically just leave it on a two and a half inch st stitch length and we're gonna get sewing. Okay, we've sewn our two side borders, so now we're going to press them open and then we'll get our other measurement. I typically press it closed, give it a good press on this side before I open it up. So now it kind of sets in those stitches. I open it up and I press to one side. So give it a good press. And I typically just work going down. This is a good time to have just your small pair of scissors and you can trim any threads as you're pressing open. Okay, so we finished pressing our borders on the sides. So the next step we need to do is now that we've got this extra um, measurement on the side, we're gonna fold it. And we're going to fold it in half and then again, measure in the middle so it trues up your sides, squares up your fabric. So I'm gonna measure that there, 21 inches. So I've already cut the borders. I've just gotta measure them, make sure they're the right size. And they're 21 inches, refer to that. Let me just make sure it has a good press there. Another border too. Twenty one inches. Yep. Right on. You want to make sure they're the exact size. One is slightly bigger, so I'm just gonna trim them both up so they're the exact size, just a little hair on there. Again, just like you did before, you're gonna, you've got the middle mark, so I don't, I don't need to pin that because we have pressed a mark for that. We're gonna finger press. I 
again, being mindful of the direction of your fabric. I want the words to not be flipped up so they're readable, so they're the, face the right way. And now I flip it over because we're, of course, sewing right sides together. Again, just like we did before. I pin the ends. Okay, let's take it to the machine and finish this layer of our borders. So we've sewn our two borders on top and bottom and we're ready to add our next layer of borders. So we lay this out and, and we're going to do the length, the sides, and we look and we can see that the width of the fabric is no longer long enough to make this border. So we're going to have to make this longer and how you do that is seam two pieces of fabric together. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And you've got your three and a half inches strips. I've already cut those, cut off the selvages. And we just, I do a quick pin, keep them together, and I'm going to take them to the machine and sew. So we've sewn this, and this time when I, I seam two borders together, instead of pressing them to one side, I open up my seams. It's less bulk that way. So I give it a good press. And now you have a long enough border that you can remeasure your um, quilt, your panel, talking about panels, making a quilt. And again, we're going to measure the middle. We want the length. I was doing the top and bottom. It's 24 and a half. Write that down. And you can make these as long as you want. I've just seen two, but you can make a continuous strip. So you just measure and remeasure as you're growing your borders. And so I'm going to measure these out and I'm going to sew my side and my top piece and we'll meet back here for the final border. These borders that I've done, I've got plenty of extra, but I just did one long border so I can use what I need. Again, I do 29 and a fourth there. And I know I've done pin before, but I can just use a, a pen mark too. border. Now that you put on your final borders, your quilt top is finished. And now you know how to create a quilt from a panel.